Good evening, everybody. I am Jill Peterson, a member of the Balderton Methodist Church. My theme tonight is waiting. I expect many of you, like me, find waiting difficult. I decided on this theme as I waited for my son to arrive. This is something I have done many times. He always adds an ish to his declared time of arrival. And on this particular occasion, I was cooking roast chicken with roast potatoes, veg, stuffing and bread sauce. Apart from the veg, not critical, but enough to start clock watching and getting a bit agitated. But we have all had to do waiting in some form or another, perhaps for an appointment or that nine months waiting for a baby and then it doesn't come on time. The son I was waiting for took an extra two weeks to arrive after the designated date. No checking on scams and things in those days. We all need the lessons of quiet patience. I thought I would look at some of the examples our Bible gives us. The first one that springs to mind is Martha and Mary. Lazarus was ill. If Jesus came, he would surely cure his dear friend. So they must have waited carrying great concern as the days passed and he did not arrive. And then the waiting was over. Lazarus died. A busy time would follow as they made the burial preparations. They were very upset. And when Jesus did eventually arrive three days late, Jesus was castigated. If you had been here, our brother would not have died. Of course, for Jesus, this was not a horrible time of waiting. He was thoroughly aware of the forthcoming miracle, a prophetic event for all who witnessed it, of Jesus' own death and resurrection. The death and resurrection also had its painful waiting for the disciples. They were all in real distress after the crucifixion. And then there was Jesus alive and among them. But Jesus does not yet say, come on, let's get going as we did before. No. He sets them to wait. He appears to them at intervals uh, for a period of 40 days, according to Acts 1. But he sets no agenda of action, so they wait. Acts 1 verse 4 to 8 reads like this. On one occasion, while he, that was Jesus, was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness, witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria 
and to the ends of the earth. Here we are yet again. Wait. Don't we feel this many times? Jesus has his own agenda. We are called to pray, but we are also called to wait. Wait for prayer answer and believe it will happen. The disciples could never have envisaged the day of Pentecost, nor the start of a church movement that could incorporate millions of people and be worldwide. We must never let our minds be uh, frustrated with waiting, waiting for Jesus' prayer answer, when all we want is something very small and Jesus has something very great to bring from our prayers. Amen. To example this, let me read to you from 2 Chronicles 29. Hezekiah became king and set about re uh, repairing and cleansing the temple. He led a people who rebelled against God back to a faith they had never known. Verses 6 to 9 reads, They turned their faces away from the Lord's dwelling place and turned their backs on him. They also shut the doors of the portico and put out the lamps. They did not burn incense or present any burnt offerings at the sanctuary to the God of Israel. Therefore, the anger of the Lord has fallen on Judah and Jerusalem. He has made them an object of dread and horror, scorn, as you can see with your own eyes. This is a passage about how God can turn things around completely to those who, like Hezekiah, pray and wait. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for every occasion when we have turned to you in prayer and felt your closeness. We know sometimes we need to wait until our own agenda is set aside and we can accept your prayer answer within your will. We are an impatient people who love the instant. Help us, Lord, to learn your humility and grace and to be able to wait for your will. Amen. Thank you for listening. And there will be another 7 for 10 next week and a service at 10.30 at the church. Thank you all and God bless you in your patient waiting. Goodbye.